Two wins in a row and a win against the old enemy to square off what took place earlier this year. What more could a Collingwood fan want to start the week? Welcome to round 15 episode of The Agenda. I'm Michael Christian and with me is Jay Clark from the Herald Sun. Jay, it wasn't a pretty match, mate, but a win's a win's a win. It was a bit scrappy at times, I agree, Chris. So, But uh, <laughs> look, I think the really strong takeaway from this game, from a Collingwood perspective, was the back half. I was really impressed. Reed, Sinclair, Goldsack, Williams, a few of these guys back. Uh, second week in a row, Collingwood has restricted the opposition to less than 50 points. They were a leaky boat earlier in the season, but this was uh, this was a positive performance in the back half. GWS this week, Chris, so a bit of feeling between these two clubs. Absolutely there is. Now, we're going to talk more about what happened on Saturday night a little later, but we do want to throw forward to this week. Mm. Spotless Stadium, GWS, Saturday afternoon, and Adam Trelaw, for the first time, will be playing against his old club. And we've just got some highlights of uh, Adam Trelaw. When he carved opposition teams up in his time at GWS, it's going to be exciting for him to get back and playing against the old club. It's going to be a big talking point. I mean, there was no doubt earlier when you saw Trelaw emerge on the AFL scene, you thought this guy could be a future Brownlow medalist. And from what I've seen in his first year at Collingwood, uh, I'm even more convinced that that is the case. He is a special talent. Now, GWS will target this guy. They are a hard-running, confident midfield, this GWS side. They'll go after him. There's no doubt about that. But when will, you look they, at... will they tag him? Uh, I'm not sure they'll need to tag him. I mean, Cornelio is probably the guy who does the shutdown jobs, whether he spends a bit of time on, on Pendlebury. But they'll look to remind him, uh, Adam Trelaw, about what he left and the list build that's happening at the Giants. But Trelaw, I mean, he's been, his transition to climb has been so seamless. Mm. I don't think this will ruffle his feathers. If anything, I think he'll help him get up for a big game. Yeah, certainly. We'll talk more about it in just a moment. But let's hear from Jared Blair and Jack Crisp talking about Adam Trelaw and the challenge ahead of him and what impact he's had at the club in his short time. You know, his attitude's been probably second to none or the best I've probably come across, you know. Um, Dipper's always been, you know, the ultimate professional and he's right out there with him. Um, pays attention to every little detail. Um, you know, no matter how long it takes him, he won't go home until he's done what he needs to do. And um, he's really starting to drag a few boys along with him. So, um, you know, he's having a pretty positive influence on a few guys. Uh, he's working pretty closely with Josh Smith and he's playing good footy. Um, yeah, and I think the flow and effect of that will, will be solid, not only in getting guys to uh, you know, work on their craft, but probably um, it'll encourage other guys to grab a couple of young fellas and uh, really start to uh, help them improve. So he's been huge for us and obviously on field um, speaks for itself. Uh, yeah, I know he's, Adam's going to be very excited to play against his old mob. I was uh, started last year against the Lions. When he first got here, <coughs> I introduced myself. He's, just a, he's one of the nicest fellas you'll ever meet off the field. Um, he likes to give give the opposition plenty of on the field, so yeah, gets that balance right. But um, yeah, he's a fantastic bloke, and I'm, I'm really glad to know him. Certainly made a big impression. He rates number one in disposals, handballs, inside fifties, clearances, bounces, goal assist, and his second in tackles. Mm. Not a bad start to your new career. We knew what a brilliant offensive player he was. That was probably the query, his defensive side of the game, whether he would run the other way. Second in tackles is a very good effort. Look, there's no doubt that Adam Trelaw would be top two in Collingwood's best and fairest. It's been a, a phenomenal first season, I think. And we saw at the weekend against Carlton, just the difference he makes for Pendlebury. So Ed Kerno, Chriso, he goes and tags Trelaw, which then frees up Pendlebury, who had a magnificent um, uh, game at the weekend. So that's the impact um, he's having. There, a lot of debate earlier in the season was the trade worth it? Well, Collingwood coughed up a lot. Two first round picks. They got a second round back. Absolutely no doubt. I couldn't be more emphatic, more clear on this. This trade uh, was a very positive one for Collingwood. Given the impact uh, he's made, he's going to be a 10 year, 200 game player for the club in his prime at the moment. No doubt this is the right trade, Chris. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that what you got here is a ready made player. Mm who had enough time in the system to be able to have the ability to come and have the impact he's had. Yeah. And I think uh, if he hadn't have played much football and there would have been a few questions asked, but yep. you've got an absolute class player for the next 10 years and certainly he is uh, he's a star. Last player, last Collingwood player to win a uh, Copeland Trophy in his first season at the club was Nathan Buckley. Yes. 94, you 90, were playing yes, with him, Chris. So, yeah. Um, what, what were your recollections of Buckley in his first year? Well, a bit the same, it seems, as Adam Trelaw, in the sense that he strove for perfection. He was just a great, had a great work ethic, mm. wanted to be the best player. Straight away. Not that he could be, he wanted to be the best player. Mm. And I think that 
that's a hallmark of great players that they want to work really hard to get where they want to be and uh, certainly Nathan Buckley was a great example of that and again a player that had an immediate impact. Yeah. A player that also has and had immediate impact at GWS has yeah. been former Magpie Heath Shaw J. And he'll be looking to play one of his best games. He was all Australian last year. Yep. He's been outstanding again this year. Yep. What do we do with him? Well, I think there's two options here, Chris. So one, you play a hard tag on him. Simon White from Carlton uh, did that and, and did it well. So that's maybe a gold sack or a crisp. Or the other option is to try and play through his man. So if there's maybe a, a query on Heeshaw's game, it's you sort of wonder how accountable he is going to be. So maybe the Collingwood midfield lower their eyes, Chriso, and try and target or kick to the man that Heeshaw is playing on to make <laughs> him defend. What do you think about that? Yeah. No, look, they're all valid points. I think they'll they'll need to put someone on him because he has... Shut down. Yeah, a shutdown role. He, need, he has so much influence. And Simon White did the job for Carlton. Now, he's a taller type player, and I think that's the type of player that you need to put on him because he's got elite marking ability, sure, mm -hmm. and to be able to cut that out of his game, that intercept mark, I think that's a critical element. So, so I, that I reckon then? that'll be a focus. Gold sack. I think probably Gold sack is yeah. the one who has played that defensive forward role before. Yeah. He might be the one that knows him inside and out, so he might be the man to what, get the job. What about the trade? I mean, this, it's hard to watch for Collingwood fans to see here. Sure, as you said, on track back-to-back -back all Australian games, he's been in super form. It was sure for Adams. As a Collingwood man, how does that make you feel now? Well, it'd be great to have he's sure at the club, but mm. I reckon Taylor Adams, I think in the uh, longevity of time, Taylor Adams will be a much better option for mm -hmm. Collingwood because he's already shown that... He's got uh, amazing leadership. leadership qualities. He'll be maybe the next captain of Collingwood. Yep. Who knows? Yep. But he is going to be a great player over an extended period. Just some short-term pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it'd be great to have both, wouldn't it? Would. But it doesn't work that way. Let's go back to Saturday night and what a performance it was by the captain, Scott Penelby. 34 disposals. He set things going really early and was a class player. And, uh, gee, this was some sort of goal as well. Well, your mate, Mickey McGuire, not so long ago, questioned uh, his role as captain, uh, really, and, and threw a bit of a cloud over him. His response here in this uh, game against Carl was absolutely emphatic. As I said, Ed Kerno went to Trelaw, so Pendlebury had more of a free reign. And he was absolutely brilliant, hardy in the clinches from the outset and kicked that magnificent left foot goal um, uh, early in the first quarter. Here he is roughing up uh, Jack Silvani, just making his presence felt. So, look, I think Pendlebury's last two months, really, after starting the season in defence, we got rid of that. Uh, in the midfield, you know, he's been all Australian worthy. He's been fantastic. With law top two in the best and fairest. He was, he was great on Saturday night. Yeah, he certainly was. Outstanding, Scott Pendlebury. So was Levi Greenwood, who has been getting the jobs on the best player of the opposition. On Saturday night, it was Bryce Gibbs. And Bryce Gibbs ended up with 22 disposals, but had left it. He only had 13 to three-quarter time, and, and the damage had been done on Gibbs. And this is some of the earlier highlights with, uh, with Greenwood and the job he's done because not only has he been able to shut down opposition plays, he's found the footy himself which has been most valuable. He plays on edge, he has a bit of mongrel, that adds another dimension to this Collingwood midfield. I thought he started the season slowly, Chris O, but his last six weeks have been very good taking out the opposition's best players. You see uh, roughing uh, up uh, Lockie Neal, very good player for Fremantle. Um, I, th I think he's been uh, very good. Now, Gibbs looked like uh, Carlton's most threatening midfield forward. Um, and he really uh, shut him out. So he does play an important role, and he's been kicking goals, Chris O. So he's not the greatest kick, Levi Greenwood, but he has been getting forward and making mm. uh, a menace of himself. So, you know, the Brad Sewell Hawthorne role, that's who he reminds me of, um, and just a central cog for Trelaw and Pendlebury to work off and be more offensive. Yeah, we've got a big day at the match review panel, but uh, as usual, we wanted to throw a couple of little yeah. snippets in. Well, the, um, the James H. Dale Thomas head clash is probably yes. the most interesting intriguing one. We'll have a look at this now. So Aish gets rid of the ball and Dale Thomas, the former Magpie Premiership player, comes in very late. Now for me, the force here is borderline. It's difficult to know whether there is much in it. Dale Thomas does cut his head in there, so there is clearly something uh, there for you to look at. Now the AFL is very protective of any head contact and um, that was a little bit late there from Dale. So I'm thinking, I know you can't say anything mate, but uh, I'm thinking maybe a fine there for Dale. Um, it'd be something you'll definitely look at. Though. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and look, one of the interesting things about that was the, and we'll just look at Nathan Brown, there's an incident involving 
Zach Tui, which I'll get your thoughts on here. Now, there was no free kick There's paid for that. There's nothing in this. There's nothing in that. And that Absolutely. was after a wild shot at goal. That'll take you about seven seconds to have a look okay. at that one, Chris. But the clear. interesting one is with, with the head clashes, it used to be that if you bumped, even if you bumped legally yeah. and there was a subsequent head clash, then you're in trouble. Yep. It's not as strict liability as it is. Absolutely. So yep. th there'd still be elements of lateness and force that'll be assessed, but uh, I'll get back to you on that one, mate. That'll be interesting. <laughs> now, the other player who was outstanding on Saturday night, and it was great to see him in good form, he's had a, such a wretched run with injuries, it was Ben Sinclair. And of course, he was playing off half back and really had a strong impact. Um, great smother there. We might even Save see that in there. a bit more yep. detail later and well, coming up Monday moments. Yep. But his use of the ball, which has been the knock on him, was fantastic. A beautiful pass to the leading Blair. Yep. And again, breaking the lines and finding Travis Cloak. He was a really good player. Well, the kicking was scrappy all night, but those two targets there, you see he added some uh, some polish. Look, I think Reed and Sinclair, these two guys getting some uh, continuity in their body, um, settling that back half is um, is been a great story. Nathan Buckley certainly talked him up in the press conference. I wondered whether this is Sinclair's best game for the footy club. I mean, he was definitely in the uh, Brownlow votes, I, I would have thought. This tackle on Land Sum, that very quick player, chased down again, stopped them on the burst there. So, look, oh, I thought he was uh, fantastic, Benny Sinclair. Yeah. Had some speed and, as you said, some polish there. Let's just hope he can stay injury-free and get a good run at it till the end of the season because uh, he's certainly a player that is and provides something different across half back. I think, I think he's been doing some ballet work with Benny Reid. Has he? I think he's, got, he's a pirouette <laughs> is man. That right? yeah. All right, time now for our Monday moments, and I'm not going to go past Ben Sinclair yep. because we just saw a snippet of it. I want to show the slow mo of this unbelievable smother on Andrew Phillips, well and he got across and saved a certain goal that was uh, through the second term. But just look at the desperation, just full length, Jay. Yep. It Bang, was, committed, was, copped the boot as well. It was outstanding work. And at a pretty critical time in the game when that match was still alive. So well done, Benny Sinclair, that tackle on Sumner as well. Now, this is a different sort of Monday moment, okay, Chris. So. Right. Uh, Tom Phillips, uh, a young guy, been in the Collingwood team, uh, yeah. doing well. Now, keep your eye on him here. Collingwood on the burst, Panterbury drops the mark. In comes Simpson. Now, there was the high contact there um, from Phillips. The umpire says play on. Watch what Phillips does now. Checks on him, Chris O's some compassion from the young Collingwood player. Just are gives him a little serious? tip. Simo, how are you, mate? Are you okay? Simo mate, this is Carlton him... versus Collingwood. Mate, at, when you've made how a contact... How can you highlight that sort of nicety? Oh, I just thought... Are you serious? He bit a tick out from Phillips looking after <laughs> his fellow AFL peer. I liked it. Michael Voss may have just stepped on him. I understand where you're coming from, but, you know, it's the little... Carlton just, and Collingwood, just mate. Just checking on Simo. You've like gone that, soft, Tom. mate. Maybe. You yeah. have gone what soft. What do you reckon Scotty Burns would say about that? Yeah, he wouldn't be happy at all. <laughs> anyway, that's well, the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you can yep. join us next week for another it's edition a, of The Agenda. And let's hope, let's hope we're celebrating a victory because Collingwood, one of four teams that GW, GWS have not beaten... And, of course, Collingwood going for three in a row. It's going to be tough, though. Saturday afternoon, 1.40 at Spotless Stadium. Good luck, the Magpies. Hopefully we'll see you next week for another edition of The Agenda. Goodbye.